St Andrew High School's motto is Life More Abundant. I'd love to hear about your family. Okay, um, I have two sisters and they all came to Andrews and I'm very close with them. They're my lifelong best friends. Um, I have a son, grown up son. He lives in London um, and I'm married. I've been married more than once. I won't say how many times. <laughs> That's my immediate family. So, um, you have been awarded a prize for this right in the Commonwealth. You tell me about your book. Okay, well, I've written two novels. Um, the first one, my, my debut novel, is Dark Heart, which I have there, um, which I think the, the, the museum has a copy of. And um, this came out in 2010. My second novel is Huracan which only came out this year, and the museum will get a copy of it, but you haven't got it yet. Um, the, the short story that I won, The Dolphin Catcher, which was a Commonwealth Writers short story prize this summer, that was a short story that wasn't a novel. Um, I'm working on turning it into a novel, so I'm working on my third, third novel. And I just published a, an e-collection, self-published e-book, of the newspaper columns that I wrote for the Galena for seven years. So I, that's really... The, the, what took me from writing in secret, because I wrote in secret all my life, even from my years at St. Andrew. Um, but I never somehow, you know, managed to really persevere with getting them published. And what kind of took me from the writing in secret to the writing for publication was writing newspaper columns. And I wrote newspaper columns for the Galena between 1994 and 2002. And they were popular and I had a lot of response from readers. And um, the Beginner stopped the column in 2002 when I, at that point, considered whether I should go and write columns for the Observer. By then we had an Observer, and then I decided, no, it was time to write the novel I wanted to write since I was a schoolgirl there. So, so the, I put that, it, you know, it's amazing. You can now publish your own work. You don't need a publisher anymore. So it's in an e-book and it's online, and you can go and buy it for not much money at all. <laughs> So that's, I mean, that's my, that's sort of the, you know, I, I was always writing, I've been writing since I was 13 years old. There is this jump from writing just for yourself to writing to other people. You have one of the school magazines here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you this is my, enter any articles for the school I magazine? did, not this one. This is my, um, this is my, this is my graduation year. graduation year, so this is my upper sixth year, um, and here I am sitting on the ground. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but in the front here, with pigtails. And the, I don't have a submission in this in this year, but I would have had in other in other year books. And we were talking in one of the breaks about graduation rituals, and we used to sign all your books. So if I, if it was mine, you'd see messages from all these people, all these girls um, sent to me, and that's what that's one of these we used to do. So you don't have that. Kind of... I don't know if they, if they do that. No. No, but that book that you would have had. Yes, I have. I have my own year book. Yeah, yeah. Yes, my two the two of them. One when I was a fifth, a fifth form, and one at the sixth. So I do have them. Yeah. And I have my bathing suit because yeah, yeah. I was part of the swim team. <laughs> just in there. I kept it, I don't know why, but I did. That's very nice. Um, I think I wanted to see if I could still fit in it. <laughs> I have to say, I don't think I could. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions about how we could add to this museum? When you were St. Andrew, the museum was not established. And uh, this is unique because there is no other school museum that was purpose built right. and therefore we welcome the ideas in how to operate the museum. Do you have any ideas that you'd like to share with us? You know, I think museums have to live, so they have to have events that bring people into them, and they have to have exhibitions that change. I mean, you can, you can always have your standard, you know, exhibitions, but you have to have things that are different all the time. I think what you're doing with film is very interesting. You would need, I suspect, to have it available in, in here, you know, so that you can come and then see, you'll be able to project and see some of the interviews. 
But you basically need to have things happen. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's always not very interesting to look just at static. I like to find out from you little unknown facts about Dan because people have been have heard you on radio, seen on television talk about the environment, talking about issues in Jamaica. But is there anything that perhaps you'd like to share with us that very few people would have known? I have a black belt in karate. Very few people would know that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't cook. You can't kitchen disasters that are legendary in my family. I'm not domesticated at all. Tell us about your background in karate. You know, I was always interested in empowerment for women and one of one of the sort of factors of that is feeling safe, feeling able to defend yourself. You know, sad that we have to think about that, but that too is a reality. So I started doing martial arts um, in, in my thirties and got a black belt and another little a little known fact about um, black belts is the, the word for them is shodan, which actually means first step. People think the black belt is the end, but it's actually the beginning. And the system of colored belts leading up to black belt was something that was done for Western audiences because we couldn't go through the two to three year training to get black belt without some kind of interim step. And a lot of people, having got their black belt, stopped training after that. They treat it as the end instead of the beginning, and I was one of those. So it wasn't as simple as that. I had some injuries that I just couldn't overcome. But I, after I got my black belt, I didn't train for very long after that. But it was a very useful discipline at the time. And it, again, it was empowering. Again, it showed me I could do far more than I realized. Have you had to use it? I've never had to actually use it. I, once in Trinidad, um, leaving training, I was, someone came up to me in a threatening way and I just dropped into a, into a stance and the person ran out. <laughs> so, but I don't know, you know, nothing, nothing where I really had to use my own words. You know. Does that come out in any of your characters in the, your writing, those that have been published and um, not yet published? No, I have not written about a karate dojo, but I... Or empowering and yeah. trying to defend but interestingly enough, most of my main characters have been boys. If you read my books, boys and men. I have one female character in the second book, Hurricane. Um, I think, but I did, I did write very in a very detailed way about my years of training. So I think one day I might revisit the dojo as a kind of a, it's, it's kind of a metaphor for life, you know. So I might. What's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? Oh, that's too hard. Favorite book? In school, post for Mr. Bezos, um, the example. More generally, probably Captain Corelli's Mandolin. You saw that movie? Which is, I didn't like the movie, but I loved the book. Favorite movie, I can't think of one. Your favorite meal? haagen Vanilla. <laughs> Tell us, why do you choose to live in Jamaica? You know, I always loved Jamaica, the place. Um, I always been a attached to the land, I love the climate, I love the way it looks, feels, songs, tastes. I, I claim my Jamaican identity. You know, if you, look, if you look like me, a lot of people tell you throughout your time that you're not really Jamaican, you know. But I, I claim it. I claim it as home and I, I also want to stand up for it. I think it's not enough to, to say you're Jamaican. You have to actually participate in public life, you have to stand for something. You have to contribute, and I try to do that. Well, thank you very much, Dan. We have enjoyed this interview, and I know that there are lots of people who have been influenced by our work.